This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Netflix, and the Hack House Strategic Missile Defense Program. And coming up on this episode, cell phone emulators, the Hack House USB Missile Defense Program, easy Linux administration with webmin and usermin, burning ISOs to thumb drives, running applications in kiosk mode, and much more. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. This is your weekly dose of Technolust, and we are your hacker zombies. At least tonight we are. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Darren made me try. Um, I didn't make strawberry you try margarita mix. Well, the the margaritas you made the episode before last were really yeah. good, so I figured, why not mix it up? Didn't work out so well. You don't mess with a good thing. They said the same thing about our show, but look at it now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so we've got uh, some awesome stuff for you guys this week. As always, it wouldn't be an episode unless I said exactly those words. Yeah. Um, and let's just go around the room, talk about what's going on and what we're doing. Um, starting with you, because I'm not it. The Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Thank totally you. calling it every time. Um, so I, uh, I, I had to work Thursday. That really blows, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I was at uh, work upgrading some ESX servers. The international people, that would be Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving, Thursday. Um, and um, so BIOS updates and ESX updates and all that happy horse stuff. And then I come today and mm -hmm. I find out that um, uh, the, uh, the VMware converter mm -hmm. um, beta and ESX betas have just been released like literally less than 24 hours ago. Great, so now you get more work to do. So, uh, well, I mean, I've got to test them in the lab and all that other, so, yay. Cry me a river, come on. You know, you know I'm just gonna, I'm begging for a segment now. Cool. It's well, cool. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a continuation of, we still haven't gotten into the whole virtualization Great. thing. Great, so just when you thought your segments were golden, they had to go and release some betas and make everything all you messed know, up for you. They're effing my stuff up, you know? Yeah. I, I can't even get my head on straight, so, had my wisdom teeth out. Yes, how did that go? Um, well, I'm not on Vicodin right now. Okay, that's good. So that's good. Aww. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking about taking a trip to Vicodin land today, but... All right. Nah. But, um, but yeah, but so... But you're feeling uh, better. I mean... I, I am feeling better. Um, hopefully, I can eat some uh, BW3 wings uh, after the shoot. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, I had them on on Tuesday. Really didn't have any pain. Just some bleeding that first day. Um, and now it's just That's kinda, what the viewers tune in for, too. It's just, you know, blood. There you go. Um, but uh, but now this week, uh, this episode, uh, much like I showed you guys how to do service control with Windows, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to do custom commands in a GUI that is freely available, freely, you know, easily installed, uh, webmin and usermin custom Linux console commands. Ooh, so web-based, so I don't have to, like, drop to SSH and get my bash on? Bingo. You know what bash really stands for? It's not the born-again shell. It's, it's something that you do with your keyboard and your face. Well, yeah. Yeah. And you have a habit of breaking them. Well, anyway, on that note, Shannon, what's going on over there, girl? Not much. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about some cell phone emulators for your computer. Pretty good thing for the holidays, I think, coming up. You know, try it before you buy it. And Matt, I definitely feel your pain on working on Thanksgiving. I used to do that like four years in a row, pretty much, working at a pizza place. So this is my first year actually off since I started working at that uh, unnamed bank. So I feel your pain, dude. <laughs> Hooray for PTO. Well, Woo! I just don't understand how. Well, how many, okay, let me ask Shannon before we get into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to just explain? No, 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 okay. no, 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 it's not structured. Were you crazy busy working at a pizza place on Thanksgiving? Yes. I don't. Why do people order pizza on Thanksgiving? Like, I can understand going out to a restaurant and eating turkey at the restaurant or eating something uh, really nice. Oh, wait, I know why. Football. Pizza? Oh, that makes sense. That Football makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Football. See, I was the okay. smart Uber bachelor a couple of years ago and, um, and did the great thing on... See, I, I did this before, like most holidays, uh, when I didn't have anywhere to go or anything to do and didn't have an awesome show living in a house with hackers. Um, so I would, the night before crazy holidays like Christmas and uh, Thanksgiving where everything closes and gets crazy, i just stock up on some pizza and just throw it in the fridge. There you go. Sure. You know? Pie for tonight and a pie for tomorrow. Why not? Yeah. So, I'm playing with uh, I'm playing with toys this episode. 
I'm, I'm going to be doing some, I know people are going to say, like, Where the, where's the Linux, uh, the, the, well, I'm doing Linux stuff, but where's the Wi-Fi stuff? And I'm actually going to be doing some of that here soon. But uh, right now, I'm playing with toys. Toys, toys that absolutely frustrated Darren. Yeah. Uh, he did. Both this week and last week. Yeah, you want to talk about the, that? If you've been tuning into the Hack House, you saw Tuesday night. Darren pulling his hair out, going, it has now been eight hours and I have not made any progress. It has now been 10 hours with no <laughs> progress. You know how that feels when you're trying to get a hack. It's a lot different when you have a deadline of everything has to work on Friday night because you're shooting. Yeah, yeah. trust um, me, it was, it was not a good day to be living in the hack no, house on it, Tuesday. <laughs> it really wasn't. Um, while Darren's getting all that up, um, let you guys know about hackhouse.com. That's H-A-K-H-O-U-S-E.com. It's here in the lower thirds. Um, and we've got pretty much our entire first floor on, uh, on film. Uh, you guys can watch it at any time during the day. There's audio, um, chat with uh, everybody involved uh, inside the, uh, the chat room. And uh, we, uh, scrolling down here, you can actually see the setup that, uh, that we've got. Uh, we've got two Sony uh, DCR-HC85s in USB mode, and we've got a monitor. Uh, showing us the chat so we can talk to you. I mean, shit. Yesterday, um, I was down here, no, two days ago, I came down at like two o'clock in the morning because I was like, oh, okay, I need to go to bed, you know, that kind of thing. I'll have one more cigarette before I go to bed. I ended up coming down and talking with the internet for another hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> I think that might have been because of the Vicodin, but anyway. That's what you can look forward to when you tune into <laughs> hackhouse.com. You can even get the Adobe Air application. Yes. Because Jay Z Man was awesome enough to do that. So, um, so toys. Toys. This is another feature that will become part of the Hack House. Um, this is the second USB missile launcher that we've purchased now. Uh, this one's actually a dud. It moves beautifully, as you can see. But the second I try to fire, it crashes the application. I've tried several applications at this point. This, this one actually is a dud. I'm sending it back to Amazon. Okay. Uh, but we have a working one that we're going to be talking about a little bit later in the show that is web-enabled with, um, with a webcam and a, a GUI on this website that you can go to right now and uh, start panning and zooming around the hack house and start shooting t uh, little foam missiles at us. And um, it's got a laser, so you can play with the cat. She went nuts over it the other yeah, night, the, the, the day that I hooked it up. It, it's definitely one of the more entertaining things that we've ever done yeah. for you guys, um, aside from this show. Well, no, I mean, think about it, right? The first episode, for, the, for those that have been sticking with it since the, the pilot, 1X01, one of the premier segments was how to control your household lights over your cell phone. And this is really just kind of like another one of those fun home automation things with a nice twist that is uh, annoying my cat. And, and anything that we can do yeah. to uh, crowdsource annoying the cat because there's only four of us here. We got stuff to do. We can't annoy it 24/7. We need your help. So yeah. log on to Hack House, get on the uh, the missile launcher, and start start effing with. We the cat. have designated times that we actually screw with the cat. Yeah, 7:30, 7:30, 7, 7, 7 o'clock. You know, whenever we're all here. Um, but now you can you know make sure that she's screwed with all during the day. So uh, obviously we'll have all that info uh, later on in the show. But um, now, are we releasing all this stuff here, like uh, open source? Yeah. Open source. Yeah. Okay, and when this cool. releases on Wednesday, everything's going to be so up people can go buy source. one of these things and they can set up their own. Let's not do the segment beforehand, but yeah, basically. Touche. Yeah, there you well, go. Well, I can't wait to see. So let's get this on the roll. Cool. You know what I can't wait to do? What? Um, get my frag on in uh, Half Life Two Deathmatch. Yeah, that's you right. You want to tell us about that, Shannon? Well. I think that since we've gotten on Revision 3, they haven't been introduced to Kirby. No, they really haven't. She's I mean, she's been on the live cam, but she has not actually been on the show. So yes. this you is two Kirby. can up with this cat. <laughs> she doesn't like to be held. I'll put her oh, down now. Jesus. <laughs> she hates being held. I'm looking forward to the emails from Peter. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But no, she's, she really loves us. She's very talkative and she follows us around. We love the kitty very much. I need to make a quick note about that because I need to dispel this. It's K-E-R-B-Y, not K-I-R-B-Y, because it's named after Kerberos, the authentication mechanism, not the little pink poofy thing in NES land. And no, I'm, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. No, not, not at, at all. all. Not at all. And Matt doesn't like unicorns. Exactly, because they're, you know, better than ponies. All right, so LAN party. Yeah, let's get the show on the road. Uh, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to be playing Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. 
I gotta say, prepare to get dominated, because I'm, I'm alright at this game. I'm pretty good. I think my favorite weapon is probably the crossbow. Of course, I usually miss really bad. Anyway, it's December 13th, just a couple of weeks, and you can play with us at game.hack5.org. And I would like to uh, say thank you to our sponsor, Netflix. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. The Netflix plans start at $4.99, and as a new member, you can get a no-risk, two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash hack5, and please don't forget the www. Next up, we're going to take a break, and I'm going to go get me some more of the strawberry crappy margarita. See ya. So you're at your office, you've thought about your firewall, you've thought about your fire suppression system. Now what about your physical security system? Well, here to help us with that and show us the USB Missile Defense Program is uh, Darren, who has been banging his head against this for the last two weeks, Darren. Yes. Well, I got this great idea, and that is, let's make the Hack House more interactive, not just, you know, passive viewer and chatting with the residents, right. but let's actually give them something to play with. Uh, very akin to some of the stuff that we did in the first season. So when I saw one of these guys over at like Think Geek, your you know, the mecca of awesome toys for, for geeks like ourselves, right. um, I, I was like, this is perfect. I'll throw a webca webcam on it. I'll you know, do like uh, the old PHP Apache cell phone Darren segment and sure. let, the, uh, let the internet control it. And then when I saw the Striker 2 had lasers, I was like, dude, you know, yep. freaking lasers. So the idea was, let's crowdsource annoying the cat. Because Kirby, let's be honest, all cats, they love lasers. And, sure. um, and you know, playing with them is fun, but we got stuff to do. So let's get you guys to play with the cat for us. And then you get the added bonus of shooting little missiles at us. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So we got lasers, we got missiles. Yeah, and we got How USB. hard could it possibly be? How hard could it possibly be? <laughs> so let's check out the, uh, you know, there, there's a, uh, you actually, um, when, you, when you get one of these guys, you get this awesome software here. Oh, it's, it's so robust. Let me, let me show you guys here. Um, this software is, as you can see, the, the gravity crap. Um, you just get your standard, like, arrow keys to move it around. You're supposed to shoot. It, it works in Windows, great, right? Um, and then there's actually supposedly an API. Uh, played with it in C Sharp. Uh, actually, two other <laughs> two people have helped me like um, convert the C Sharp app into like a console app because I was thinking about tying it together with PHP, mm -hmm. Apache, all Darren style. Not so much. So I looked at some alternative software for Linux, right? Right? Because there's pretty active community behind these sorts of things, in, in a weird sort of way. Not. In a, uh, in a way that they're all in one place, but everybody had the same idea at once. Mm -hmm. um, so one place to look at is here, uh, Luke Cole has a place where he's actually put together USB missile launcher drivers uh, for a couple of these. And, and these are just a dime a dozen out of China. There's like three or four variations of them. Um, and, and this one was nice, except it was not for this particular unit. So I looked at this one. Uh, it's a Java software version for what I thought was the Striker 2, the version I had, and written in Java, and again, no dice. Um, so how many, how many did you actually go through before you found Six. One? Six. Six, yes. Uh, I should probably note uh, David uh, here has uh, another one for the Mac. Um, okay. And then, of course, there is this Python version that's uh, pretty sweet here. You can get it over uh, the URL, and um, it's all right. Except it didn't work. Pretty though, it doesn't work. Right. Um, and then there's the idea of, oh, hey, let's control to the web over the web. So you know, I've got all of these links in the show notes. This one's another Python implementation with a, a PHP front end. Doesn't work, and I'm like going crazy here until I find, finally, find uh, an implementation implementation that works, and that is Alex Suz uh, Suzuki's uh, Linux drivers for the Striker 2 USB missile launcher, and it turns okay. out that the boards are actually different, the instructions are actually different, even though the USB vendor idea is the same. Uh, okay. 
when they added the laser to this unit, things got a little wonky. So, um, so this is actually a C++ app that uh, one of the, the hack stalkers, if you will, found uh, that, that was a Coded Ninja, okay. sent it to us, and we're like, oh my gosh, this actually works. So fired up a Ubu uh, an Ubuntu box here, and okay. you've got that over I here. Do. You want to show it off, make sure that Paul uh, gets the Ubuntu queued. And, and see, and you've got your standard, you know, your WSAD controls. You can hit space to fire and all that fun stuff, and it works. Can you see that, Paul? Isn't that great? We got laser control. And are you, are you seriously doing the Cylon thing? All right, that's cool, that's cool. Those are HD cameras and we, we, they're expensive to replace, by the way. Whatever. All right, so we can control it in Linux. Great, we are almost there, right? Okay. Well, the thing is, we're not gonna write something where we actually pass WASD to this application. We need to turn it into a console application mm -hmm. that we can send arguments to. And uh, that's exactly what we did. And, and my C++, I took some in high school. So it's been about eight years. I'm a little foggy. You and me both. Yes. But somebody came to, to my uh, came to my aid, and I've got to give mad props to Jason Applebaum for putting together, uh, not only uh, modifying the C++ application, but also putting together a little job front end, back end dealy, so that you guys can totally log into the Hack House and play with the USB missile launcher. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. I've got it over here on my laptop. And uh, let me pull that up. And uh, this is actually the Java code for the client. And basically, it, um, it is a Java applet that, uh, that has a whole bunch of buttons for moving it up, down, left, right, whatever. And in uh, the version that will be up soon, uh, just takes your standard WSAD keyboard input. I right, get fired up in, clip, in Eclipse here. Um, and for you Eclipse Java developers, he actually showed me this really sweet plugin called Swing Builder, and if I click over to design here, oh, yeah. you can actually see, this is um, right here in Eclipse, I can actually design my GUI just like I would in like Visual Studio or something, mm -hmm. and I can move this around, move the laser button over to here, and now I have a, uh, what, does that remind you of anything? Harkening back to maybe the NES days? Oh, you know. Yeah, so I hope to put together something where you guys can submit skins, uh, oh, so maybe we cool. can have like an NES skin, yeah, definitely. Some, other, some other ones to play with. Um, so great, we've got a Java applet, uh, and then on the back end, we actually have a Java server. You want to first show off the, um, the, the modified C++ program on the Ubuntu box? Sure. Okay, so the way that this works is we shut off the first striker where you just hit the WASD. This one, you just do striker and then the, like R, L, U, and D for left, right, up, down. And then how many? So uh, you could just go like left 200 or something. And you see the guys moving around. Okay. Yeah. So now, so now this would be inefficient to just pass all this to, you know, we've got the command line working, but yeah. even this would be inefficient to try and send multiple commands over mm -hmm. to, so. Well, I mean, we could, if we wanted to, we could run an Apache server on this box uh, with a little bit of PHP. I could put a button together that when you clicked it, it told, told the system command to run Striker. Right. U10 to move it up 10 or whatever, uh, but then we'd have to give out the home IP address and that wouldn't yeah. be a whole lot of fun, would no. it? No. So we can go ahead and... So we've got a Java server. Okay. So this Java server listens for commands from the web server, which is also running the applet for the client. So if you go ahead and run that here, okay, it's not really too much to it, just little boxes telling us, you know, what we're listening to and whatnot. Well, if I come over here to the client on uh, my Acer, I'm actually, you know, the, the viewer here. I'm going to go over to hackhouse.com, and this is just a temporary page, so mm -hmm. don't hit this. It'll be at hackhouse.com with big, uh, you know, shiny flashing buttons and whatnot. I get a Ustream window here so I can actually see the webcam that's going on in the missile launcher, and I've got a beautiful interface here where I can start telling it stuff. You've restarted the server, so I need to refresh uh, the page. Crashed. That's fine. It crashed. Well, so, hey, you know, it happens. All right, so. Make sure that this is running again. And it's running. All right, and I hit up the applet. Now, it's a self signed applet, so I'm going to get a thing here from Java telling me that, um, that uh, when I ran Eclipse, I totally effed over my Java. So let's close that open. And uh, let's try to refresh this page now.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay. Now, it's a self-signed application. Um, so you get the standard security standard prompt there. Standard security one. I promise you it's not going to do evil stuff. Okay. Go ahead and run it. And now, and of course, my Ustream as well, so I can see uh, those beautiful hanging lights there in the kitchen. And not so much with the advertisement there. Let's close that. All right. So now I can actually point it around. I'm controlling the missile launcher just like you guys would over the web. For the moment, it's just, you know, button clicks. Go ahead and fire this bad boy. Uh, one thing to note here is the power is actually how many t uh, ticks or, or degrees, not necessarily degrees, but I can, I can change it to like 50 so that when I go right 50, it actually, you know, moves Goes a lot longer. more. Okay. Yeah. So you can get that finite control. You can put it down to, uh, to one and, um, and get the laser exactly where you want so that the cat freaks out. Yeah. And um, go ahead and fire the missiles. So there you go. We've, we've totally web enabled a uh, USB missile launcher. One that actually works. One that actually works. <laughs> uh, we're sending this bad boy back, but uh, I'm going to get another one because I have a lot of, I mean, this guy shows a lot of promise. I mean, it'll move 360, which is a lot nicer than this guy's mm -hmm. 270 degrees motion, basically. Um, Does go farther. They, they shoot about 20 feet, whereas these are more or less Six, five. Yeah. Something like um, that. Uh, you, this uses compressed air. These guys use, uh, they're spring loaded. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm looking for something with Kung Fu grip. Uh, this does have a laser, which is very nice. Maybe we can do some custom stuff with the manufacturer. Who knows? But the, the guy, <laughs> and then of course, where do we go from here, right? Right. We got laser range finding. Because if we can shoot a laser, we can take a look at the image and see how big the dot is. And based on that, kind of figure out how far away things are. And then maybe we could put up like, I don't know, different like uh, bullseyes around the hack house so, so we can log in and try so to get a So there's good score. a whole bunch of different stuff that we can actually do around this project. Mm -hmm. Not just shooting lasers and, you know, missiles at a cat, but we can actually, you know, like you said, uh, laser range finding, um, motion tracking. Yeah, um, yeah you can so strap a Wiimote to this guy and it'll actually find infrared stuff and, and track it. Uh, I'll have a link to that. It's pretty cool. So where, uh, when do you think we will be able to? Well, it's online right now. Unleash this. It's it's online right now. You can head over to hackhouse.com and play with it. Uh, or if you're interested in the development of it, even if it's just you want to beta test it and submit like your experience with it. If you want to, if you if you're Java developer and or hey, if you're Python, PHP, whatever, and want to do some front end stuff, uh, head over to the um, Hack Five forums under projects. We have board for it so that you can get in on the development of this guy. Um, source code, fully available, and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you've got one of these, you can also run it at home, right. protect your own network, and mess with your own cat. Um, so yeah, and then you know from here, there's plenty of opportunities of tons of missile defense mayhem. I like it. Yes. Well, um, I, I, for the sheer you know, satisfaction of actually not having to hear you bitch every night that this is garbage, and I hate these applications. I'm glad you finally got it working, well, Darren. I, you know, mad props <laughs> to Jason Applebaum. Over yeah, you, got, you were talking with him for, for forever. I mean, yes. you know, day well, he's gonna by be, day. He's going to be day. down here in uh, December. Okay. I think it's December 18th or 19th he's down here. So we're going to shoot something for the episode, and, uh, and you guys will see the man behind the uh, – he's an awesome CS student that, that helped me out. The Missile Defense Program. Yes. Awesome. Pro programmer. Programmer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the missile defense programmer behind the USB missile mm -hmm. defense program. Program. Yes. I like it. Rock on. All right. So hit us up on Hackhouse. Let us know how it goes. Hit up the forums. And uh, now let's find out more about tasty trivia and uh, first person shooter stuff. First person shooters. Yes. Nice. All right, last week's trivia was, based on a narrow stream of atomic clusters of liquid mercury or tungsten accelerated by high voltage, what device was invented by Nikola Tesla in the 1930s and allegedly stolen by the Russians thereafter? And the correct answer was death ray. That was correctly answered by SWFU and Kirby PPC. Guys, we're gonna be sending you one of Dual Core's new CDs called Lost Reality. And if you're into some nerd core music, which I personally love. You should check out more of his music at dualcornmusic.com. And this week our trivia is... In the first technology preview of Doom, dubbed Doom, Evil Unleashed, what do the secret messages say about Jules and Tom? If you're the first person to answer this right, 
actually, you know what? I think we're gonna surprise you this week. We're gonna give you a prize. It's gonna be a surprise. If you're the first one to answer this right on the Hack5 forums, I'll PM you and we'll get the ball rolling. And I wanna thank our sponsor, GoDaddy. If you wanna make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Also, don't miss the GoDaddy.com holiday shopping spree. Between now and December 15th, every purchase of $50 or more automatically qualifies you for a chance to win a $1,000 cash prize. That's cash. Visit GoDaddy.com today and use the code HACK4, that's H-A-K-4, for 15% off of a $75 order or more. Check out all the info at GoDaddy.com and get your piece of the internet at their website. And next up, I'm going to be talking about some cell phone emulators as soon as Darren gets over to my set. Come on! So today, as we shoot this show, it is officially Black Friday. I know it's scary, and I actually, for some reason, left the house. It was a mistake. I almost got ran over. You serious? At Prime Outlets, uh, yeah. Well, a lot of people this holiday season, a lot of geeks in particular that are watching, are probably going to be thinking about m mobile operating systems, particular yes. one, particularly ones that you can put in your pocket that make phone calls, but they're, they're not just telephones anymore. We've got our Palm-based phones. We've got our Windows Mobile-based phones. <coughs> We've got our BlackBerry phones. We've got Symbian, and you got your Android, Android, your iPhone, uh, your your Nokia. It's, there's so many of them. And how how are you going to decide this holiday season? Well, one really really good way to decide is just try to download a cell phone cell phone emulator. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all sorts of different ones that you can download, and they're available all over so, the internet. So what's a cell phone emulator? What does that do? Basically, it's a cell phone in your computer. Okay. You took all of these and you squished them inside the PC. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I have three up right now. I have the Windows one. I have a Palm Centro right here, which I'm familiar with because I have a Palm Centro. And then I also have this new one, the BlackBerry Storm. Ooh, nice. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of pretty. I kind of like it. I'm rocking the BlackBerry Curve right now, and I'm thinking about upgrading this Christmas, and I'm not really sure what I should do. And it's a big it's a big big deal because I mean you, Christmas you, uh, present. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of times it's like a two-year commitment or something like that. So you're right. You should probably exactly. figure out what you're getting into before you... I mean, not only is it, like, what applications are available, but it's also, right. can I stand this phone? Can you stand the interface that comes along with this phone that yeah, you want? Yeah, because it doesn't matter how great the applications are if you can't... I mean... The phone could be adorable. It could be pink, but... What mm -hmm. if you hate the interface? Okay, so you've got uh, Windows, Palm, and uh, BlackBerry, which would be your three major platforms here in the U.S. and I guess overseas yeah, and iPhone. everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, you're right, iPhone and um, particularly Symbian cross right. pond. Um, what about those? I mean, they they left out. What's the deal there? No, they're not left out at all. You can find emulators for those as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, I didn't download all of them. Yeah. <laughs> that would take way too long to go through. Okay, so what, what kind of things should be, we be aware of when we go ahead and run a mobile phone emulator? Um, one of the things that you need to be aware of is that a lot of people who uh, make applications for mm -hmm. cell phones, they could use these emulators. So if you like to develop your own applications, if you want to develop something for an iPhone, you could try it on one of these emulators mm -hmm. before you actually come out with it in, in the iPhone store or if, before you want to bring it to one of the major contractors. There you go. That, that's great. I mean, especially if you, know, you want to put something together in like C Sharp for, what is it, .NET CE or you know, J2ME, whatever. Yeah, exactly. you can, so you don't have to go ahead and buy one of these devices and ferry over an SD card. And my favorite part about this is just playing with the interface. The phone works on the emulator exactly like it would work in real life. Not only do you have the classic cell phone outline right here, but you can also use it as if you're using the BlackBerry or using the Palm. The Palm right here, the Centro, it has a touch screen when mm -hmm. you get the phone itself. Right. So on here, yeah, all of these are touch screen Yeah, and here you, you use your mouse as if you're touching the screen with your finger mm -hmm. or with your pen or whatever it comes with. Right, right. So you can go around here and check out different things. I can click on it just like any other cell phone. 
And we can load up applications, we can browse the internet, we can, yes. what, all that? We actually tried to do a BlackBerry application, but that well, didn't work so well. Well, we tried the wrong kind of, we tried JAD file, it needed to be something mm. else, but yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, and this is the new BlackBerry, the, uh, what is it called again? BlackBerry Storm. Sweet, so if that's kind of on your mind like it is on mine, probably want to play with it before you actually plunk down the $973. Yes. This one's kind of cool because if you ever, if you go into one of the menus, say, oh, camera's a bad choice. If you go into, let's do contacts. No. There we go. You can hold down the right click, and it mm -hmm. works just like the little ball that comes on a BlackBerry. Oh, you hold down the right okay. click on your mouse, and then you click the left, the mm -hmm. left mouse click. Yeah. <laughs> Clickety click click on one of the menu choices and it brings it up. So it works just like any of the old school ones that you might use. There you go. Now, if uh, if you're interested in checking out these as well as other emulators, where can you go, where you can find out more information? Well, I actually found this on the Hack5 forums. Um, Moonlit did this entire review of like six different ones, and that's where I got the idea. So Moonlit, thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of an outline on my own blog, so you guys can check that out. I promise to update it this time. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are going to uh, take a quick break and then uh, see what Matt's up to with Linux. Woo! All right, so a couple of weeks ago, Matt, you showed us a little front-end system that we could put on a Windows server so that we could delegate control of our game servers. Crowdsourcing, I think, is the theme of the show. Yeah. You want to tell us how we can do this in Linux using some fun web stuff? Yeah, I got uh, I got an email um, from one of our viewers um, and uh, basically asking, look, I, I you know I, I administer a couple Linux boxes, you know, here and there, and I need a way to do some custom stuff and also make it easier for me so that I don't have to do because let's face it, people who use Linux, mm -hmm. not everybody loves the command line. Okay. No. So. Okay. That being said, mm -hmm. uh, what I did is I went on a hunt and actually found some software that I used uh, way back in the day and found that it's still actually out there and is still in active development. Uh, the tool is called Webmin. Um, okay. And so this is, is, what is Webmin for those, like, is it like cPanel? Is it mm, like? No, it's, it's basically taking the most, uh, you know, used features of what you're going to use a server for, okay. you know, uh, specifically. The common stuff. The common stuff. Your, your boot up, your shutdown, your, you know, uh, disk and network access, uh, network monitoring, hardware, uh, PHP configuration, all these things that a standard, you know, uh, Linux server is going to do, mm -hmm. you can now do in a GUI on the web. Nice. Now, cPanel is ma basically made, uh, you know, specifically for hosting. Okay. Multiple, so this is not multi for multiple people. Okay. This, I mean, how you does it can, differ? It, it differs in, you know, basically, uh, cPanel as is installed is set up and auto does everything, you know, setup creation, you know. This just gives you a, a, a GUI interface to do it yourself. Okay. So, you know, you'd have to go in and you'd have to change the uh, HTTP handlers, you know, you'd have to go in and do all, you know, MIME types, you know, PHP configurations. Everything that you would normally, if you were running a single site on a Linux box, mm -hmm. that you would have to do via the command line, we can now do in uh, a GUI. Great. So instead of uh, just giving SSH access to our individual users and saying, hey, have fun, have at it with some Bash scripts, uh, they can now come into something a little bit more user-friendly, if you will, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's... So paint me a picture. What, what's our scenario here? Our, our scenario is, okay, we just don't have, you know, the manpower because we've got, you know, we'll say 20 servers. And we're not using a control panel software, which normally you have to pay monthly for. Webmin, so this is free and open source? This is free and open source. Like it? Uh, you can create your own themes. You can skin it as you want, you know, so on and so forth. Update it, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Disk quotas, you know, here's an example. So we've got home, user, var, home to. You know, we can go through and we can actually see um, basically everything that, you know, you're going to find on, I mean, this is my live box. Uh, this is my live, uh, you know, web hosting server. So these are all the user quotas that people have set up. Okay. Um, so, you know, going through and we can actually look at running processes all via the web. Mm -hmm. um, Webmin has a utility that plugs into Webmin, which is called Userman. 
Um, now, so it's basically like instead of webmin is the control for the entire web server, usermin is control for just what that user has access to? Exactly. And we can customize it. Yes, we okay, can. Okay, because I, I think you know a little bit about web hosting being, you know, the guy behind divergent networks and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you've had, you know, and, and your clients are not just your typical, I want to host a web page as right. much as they are, I'm trying to do something a little bit custom and need some like one-on-one -on -one thing here. Yeah. So you've used this to do like custom web interfaces for yeah. certain stuff? I mean, uh, back before Game Server, um, you know, before I had Evolands, mm -hmm. um, you know, before it was called that, uh, I was hosting game servers for friends and before control panels for game servers were really prevalent, I was hosting on Linux. Okay. And I built custom control panels using Webmin and Usermin. Cool, let's take a look. So what I'm going to do is you need to install Webmin and mm -hmm. then you need to install Usermin. Okay. They're RPMs, RPM-I yeah, and the package. Go. Easy, easy peasy. There's like no it. configuration beyond that. Wow, It's really? automatically set up nice. and you log in. So here we've got the main Webmin login. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into others and we're going to go to custom commands. So now we can actually create custom commands. Okay. Um, we're going to create a custom command, and because I'm a radio guy, we're going to run a sh start shoutcast script. Okay. Um, the command is going to be uh, sc serve and the ampersand to run in the background. Um, the directory. Does it matter what directory we run in? Um, it's whatever. If you're if it's not in a bin folder mm -hmm. or like an S bin, which is system wide. You're going to have to specify the directory. Okay. So we're going to do root uh, downloads, and we're going to run it as root. Now you can specify to run it as a webmin user. This is great because now a user can run things as root, and you don't have to delegate them the user the root exactly. password. No more. No. Yeah, hey, run that sue thing. But there because because when we log in, mm -hmm. they're only going to see this command, and they can't edit it. They never they get never access have to the password. Exactly. Nice. Okay. So we're gonna we don't need to hide the command. There's no HTML or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and create that, uh, and we're also gonna create another one, which is going to stop um, the shoutcast server. Okay. And we're just gonna do a kill all nine sc serve. All right. Um, and we're gonna run this as root as well. So you don't have to enter the password here in the create. Nope. nope. Because it's auto, it's pulling all the user information from the system. Mm -hmm. We don't have to create users now. You can create separate webmin users mm -hmm. that are not part of the Linux users and groups. Okay. So they only have access to the web front end, right. and you can specify commands to run as other users. So what's this going to look like as a user? So what this is going to look like as a user, and we're going to go into. So we're logged in as root. Um, just because I know the password. There you go. And we go to, oh, hold on. We have to go and set it up and say that it's available in user min. Ah, there you go. So Making it available. My apologies. Ah, that's OK. So we'll go ahead and. I borked my Java earlier. Yeah. You know, it happens. Yeah. This is live. So live is fun. You can watch it live at custom commands. every Friday. There you go. You've got right. Star Shoutcast. So server. this is what it looks like. So I, so me as a user, I log into your system, and now I can start and stop a Shoutcast server without having to know the root password, nor do I have to know anything about this whole bash thing. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Great. So what we can actually do is um, make sure that it's not running. OK. And it's not. All right. So we will go ahead and start the server. And, uh -huh. and it actually just go ahead, goes ahead and prints that to our console. Yep. We can turn that on and off just depending on whether or not there's something, I don't know, sensitive. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and oh, hey, there's look at the that. Shoutcast, we got a shoutcast server. Right. So now, you know what? I'm done using it. So let's go ahead and stop it and kill all. And let's go ahead and refresh and see. So you could not only no make start and stop the server, you could say play this playlist or yes. play that song. Or you think you could use something similar like this to, I don't know, maybe like web enable our stereo so the kids at home can, I don't know, change the music at our house? It's quite possible. Yeah. We All might right. be thinking about something like that. There some, you go. Some crowdsourced, you know, playlist generation. Crowd, let's just crowdsource everything. I like it. Okay. The cool. one big thing that I did want to show you guys yeah. is there's a lot in Webman. Okay. There is a lot. Okay. Like what else? So everything in here, this entire list. Uh, just give me the, the highlight reel. The highlight of system, you can specify servers, networking. What I wanted to show you was the granular control that you can give people that log in. Okay. So if I wanted to, I can unselect everything here mm -hmm. and only select custom commands, mm -hmm. and they would only have access to the custom commands field. 
So Squid Proxy Server and SendMail Server and Pro FTPD. Th they these would are never things. see that when they logged into Webmin. Nice. So it's really great, and if you guys spend a little time with it, you know you might think to yourself, "Wow, wow, why don't I just use Windows?" <laughs> no, it's just making your life easier. And yeah. at the end of the day. Being a sysadmin, that's what it's all about. The more time that you have to do other things, and you don't stick around, you know, trying to f remember what the command was, mm -hmm. the more shit you're going to get done. So I recommend you guys go to webmin.com and uh, and check that out. Sweet. All right. And this was based on some questions that you got via email. Mm -hmm. I think we also have some other emails. Shannon, uh, what kind of questions do we get from the users, the viewers? Actually, I have two questions for you guys this week. Uh, the first one comes from my personal friend, Jenny. Um, she's a real big uh, fan of like music, and she's creating her own DJ music. Uh, one of her friends, he's a DJ, and sh her plan for this is to have, throw this really big party and have him DJing at a table with a big projector screen behind him, and then she's going to have like this little kiosk stand standing back out in the crowd with her own computer, her own home computer, running a bunch of different emulators, different video games that will play on this projector behind the DJ, which I thought is a really cool idea. Her problem with this, though, is that she doesn't want to have people getting access into all of her other applications. She just wants to have it stuck on this one emulator or this one or two different emulators. So is there a way for her to keep people in those emulators instead of letting them out into any anything else so they could like put viruses on her um, computer and stuff? Uh, okay, it sounds like there's the, really two parts to this. One, yeah. she doesn't want her machine to get effed up. And two, she doesn't want to let people outside of the application. You want to take that first part there? The uh, not borking a, a machine is something that we talked about a couple weeks ago um, with Windows Steady State. Um, it, it's absolutely bulletproof. Once you get it locked down and set up, with your permissions and what applications can actually run, what parts of the system they have, bulletproof. Okay. Once you create that disk, you know, cache, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Now, the the question kind of changed when she read it that last time. I wasn't prepared for the second part, which is letting somebody out of an application. Um, do you have any insight on that? I mean. Well, what I'm thinking here is basically she needs to run the application in a kiosk mode. I know that it's possible to actually change what your shell is in Windows yeah. from something like, well, obviously, explorer.exe to something else. We've, we've touched on things like this in the past as far as it's concerned, like with uh, like LightStep and different UIs. Um, if memory serves me right, you can actually tell it an application. I don't know what kind of stability or what kind of... Other things go into that. So uh, this is where uh, we take the question and open up to you guys. Uh, we could obviously sandbox it with something like Sandboxy. We could run it in a VM. Uh, from what I understand about Genigo, her, her equipment, not like so super powerful. I mean, because here's the thing, right? Emulators, while it sounds trivial, they do some weird stuff with video yeah. that not a lot of times are going to be very uh, happy Yes, with, emula uh, with uh, running in a VM. I mean, you're basically running a machine emulated inside of a machine emulated, it, 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 it gets crazy. So uh, I'm wondering what you guys think about not just uh, sandboxing, but also restricting use. Uh, I know that there's actually, with like some programs have kiosk modes. Like if you right. start iExplore with the dash K parameter, it puts it into kiosk mode. Uh, there are actually uh, plugins for Firefox to do something similar so that you can't exit it. Great for if you're going to a trade show like CES, you want to show something off and not have people yeah. you know, F with your machine. So uh, let me know if, if you guys have some ideas of how she could get this done. Hit us up, feedback at hack5.org, uh, or just go ahead and post it up on the Hack5 forums. So yeah, should be good. Yeah. Well, thank Anything you very else? much. Yeah, we also have a second question from uh, one of our Ustream viewers. Uh, it's Ustream28589. He asks, I have a recovery CD that I need to boot from my EPC. Is there a way to burn an ISO to a USB drive? Yes, there is. In fact, uh, it is a program that I have as as a netbook user. I, you know, uh, I'm on my second netbook. I'm looking at the third. I know, I know, Christmas. Um, and there are totally ways to do this. Um, what you want to look for is this program called UNet Bootin. Okay, it is. Corn? <laughs> no, UNet Bootin. I know, <laughs> right? But still way better than ponies. I try. So uh, basically what this application does is it takes um, 
a generic ISO file that you'd normally burn to a CD and actually just writes it to the USB so that you can seriously just boot off of it because come on, modern day machines, we can boot off USB no problem. Yeah. It's even cooler than that, right? Because this application will let you not only just you know specify your ISO, but it will automatically download the live distributions of several popular Linux distros like Gparted to fix your MBR problems, uh, to Backtrack 3 to get your Wi-Fi hacking on, to you know Ubuntu to just for generically everything because Debian rules, right? Yeah. That'd be nice. Moving so, on. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you net Booten, uh, Mubix showed it to me. I love it. You guys should check it out as well. I'll have links to all that fun stuff. Um, and it has been my savior because those USB CD-ROM drives, pain in the ass. Because um, you got to remember where you put them, and then you know break them out. And or if you think, oh, I can get by by taking one of those USB adapters with the IDE channel on the other oh, end. You yeah. know those cheapies that that we all have from. Fries or Micro Center or whatever. Yeah. Um, they're great, but not all of them support uh, booting off of CD ROMs, whereas, you know, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, I digress. It's very cool stuff. Um, I've been using it a lot lately just by having like multiple USB keys with different operating systems. So much fun. Way easier than going through. I know Backtrack 3 in particular has its own USB version, but it's just so nice to just grab any ISO and make it bootable. Yeah. So. You net boot, and I'll show you guys uh, next episode how to use it uh, more particularly with a way to offline update Windows and Office. How's, how's that first? Sounds for like tease. a good idea. Yes. Anything else you want to tease? Um, tease, not so much. Um, wanted to let you guys know um, if you are not currently subscribed to the Hack Five uh, RSS feeds, um, make sure you get on that. The links are finally fixed. So if you go over to the Revision 3 side, you get subscription options, iTunes, Miro, um, you know, all that happy, happy stuff. And also uh, on the Hack 5 site, you've got up here in the upper right, it looks a little bored because I use a Mac. <laughs> go oh, well, figure. no, I think that's Darren that needs to fix his CSS. I'll, ah. I'll get on that. So make sure you guys sign up for the uh, RSS feeds at hack5.org or revision3.com slash hack5. There you go, yeah. Because you don't want some, you know, day old techno lesson. Get it right now. Yeah. Or if you're, if you're really crazy, hackcast.com, see it as we film. Oh, it. yeah. Yeah. I do want to tease one other thing, and, and this will become a new giveaway. Uh, if you guys haven't heard of this, this is a awesome documentary. I've got the DVD here. It's called Hackers Are People Too. I don't want to give you too much because I will be talking to the director, mm -hmm. uh, Ashley Swartu. We will have her on next episode via Skype, and I hope that you guys enjoy that because it's a really cool documentary. Um, about basically hacker culture. So she goes around to different cons, talks about, uh, talks to a lot of people at, at DEF CON and TORCON and yeah. places like that about what it is that hackers are. And, and I think the quote that really resonates with me was at the very end of the film where she talks about if you were to really show what hackers' lives are, it would be a bunch of geeks just doing laundry. And if you watch the hackhouse.com, you know that, yeah. Cooking, we're, we're just laundry, yeah. dishes. <laughs> yeah, pretty you know, much. Hacking Apple TVs, uh, screwing with Xbox code, and yeah. USB missile and launchers. With cat. There you go. Screwing with the cat. Crowdsourcing, <laughs> screwing with the cat. Yeah. Love so, it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's think, pretty much I it. I didn't think there was anything else we had to do. Um, if you yeah. want stickers, hack5.org slash stickers. Oh, We've still got a bunch of them. Got a, I got a new page for that. Do you? Oh, I've got it in dev. I haven't showed you. I've got the, I've got an HTML. I haven't, I haven't implemented it in the WordPress. You're gonna love this because I figured out. I, I found it real quick. There's a PHP exec. I know this is a little old. PHP exec. Uh, just search that in, um, in WordPress, and you can do PHP inside of WordPress post or page, and then all of a sudden you can do awesome dynamic stuff with your content management system that owns. Check it out, hack5.org slash stickers for more than just stickers now. Break my website or break your face. Next episode, tune in for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it. Yes, without further ado, we uh, hope to see you guys next week. Hit us up on the forums, follow us on Twitter, all that fun, happy uh, social media crap. And uh, in other words, trust our tech See you guys.
all foam. There's more. Why is it all foam? It's not all foam. Drink it. It's all foam. Drink it! Yeah, really. <laughs> you remember what happened last time. Mary Mac. Mac.